Hi, my name is Richard. I'm a sales manager. And I live in Leeds. So I'm originally from Liverpool. I like theatre, I like um, sports, I like music, um, especially the Rat Pack. I like Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, I like a bit of everything really. If you like any of the things that I like, or you like to meet for dinner, perhaps, um, I'm looking for a woman, obviously, who likes a laugh. And um, if you'd like to know more, then please get in touch. So that's me. If um, yeah, if you like anything that I like, then please do get in touch, and I hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you. Hi, my name is Angela. I'm in my mid thirties. I live in Bradford. I work in marketing. I would like to say that I've got tons of exciting interests, like cooking Malaysian food and swimming with dolphins and hang gliding and going to Paris on a whim but I don't, I kind of read a lot and um, I like watching films. I'm looking for somebody to watch films with, um, maybe we have a nice meal out somewhere um, and just someone to spend time with, you know, some cheesy walks in the park or you know along the beach hand in hand that kind of thing um i'm aware that i'm sounding really quite dull now but actually i suppose i am but i'm really good in bed <laughs> i don't know what else to say um i've never done this before i'm sure everybody says that who's done it a million times before but really i haven't i am looking for a genuine decent guy um to start getting to know me um, and oh yeah that kind of thing so you know if you, if you like what you see uh, and you want to know more then uh, uh, get in touch bye
Hey. 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 Calm down. Stop. Stop it. Listen. I need you to just calm down and listen for a second, okay? It's me. It's okay. I can't believe you're here. It's so good to see you. How are you? <laughs> Sorry, foolish question, eh? You know, believe it or not, I don't really drink as much as I used to do. I was beginning to wonder if I'd ever see you again. Did you wonder if you'd ever see me again? You're a hard one to track down, you know. I've been looking for you for months. And months. I've searched everywhere for you. Spend days just walking around the centre looking for you. Just hoping. But I was beginning to wonder if you disappeared off the face of the earth and then today I found you. It's so good to see you. But you can understand that I'm also angry. You can understand why, can't you? You can nod. You do understand. Because you see, the way I remember it, we were a happily married couple. Like any other happily married couple, we had problems. We had a big argument. And you left me. You left me. Funny how two worlds collide. Ain't it funny how maybe you could be mine when I talk to you? Sun shivers down the spine when I'm close to you. I can't help but feel fine. Could this be? My fairy tale story. Could this be? Ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to take this opportunity to say a few words. Oh. No, 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 seriously, no, no. I, I, I know it's all come yeah. up, but I would, like, I would like to say just a few words very quickly. Okay. I really appreciate you coming around on this momentous occasion to help me celebrate my new job. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, for one night only, I think I can safely say. I'm the happiest man on this earth. Happy <laughs> pisshead on this earth. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not drunk yet. Maybe it will be when you two have left. You get in there. Anyway, seriously though, I really do appreciate you both. And I consider you both to be my closest friends. Neil, I've got to say that about you because from now on we're going to be working the same team. <laughs> yeah. um, but most of all, I would like to say a big thank you to my beautiful, gorgeous, Wonderful wife, Angela. Uh -huh. For the past two years, I've done nothing but bore her to death about how much your position at Lockdown from Waterman would mean to me. <laughs> and in all that time, despite the failed interview and constant moaning about my previous job, she stood by my side. And she's been a constant support, power of strength and encouragement. So, I'd like to join me, raise yep. your glasses, yep. in a toast to my wonderful right. wife, Angela. <laughs> to Angela. 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 <laughs> to Angela. Right, I'm starting to get embarrassed now. I'm going to go and make us all some coffee. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll help you. Where, where have you been? We were fine. Everything was just fine. We were okay. You just left. Why? Where have you been? Where the fuck have you been? I've been going out of my mind. And I thought you'd run up and found somebody else. 
And I thought he'd left the country. And then I see you walking through the town centre like there's nothing wrong. I'm going to take that thing off your mouth now. And when I do, you're not going to scream. Because if you do, I'll put it back on again. And there's nobody else around to hear you anyway. Just not if you understand. There she is. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just please, just let me go. Why should I do that? You're my wife. You belong to me. I don't remember the vows that we made. For better or worse. For richer, for poorer. Don't remember? So, once again, where have you been? Where have you been, Angela? Just answer the bloody question. Where have you been? For six months you've not been living with me. So where have you been? I've just been here. I haven't been anywhere. I've been looking for you day and night for the past six months. I don't believe you. Where have you been? I've been here. You're lying. You met someone else, didn't you? No. Come on, Angela. Don't treat him like I'm stupid. I saw you in La Maison, on our cafe. I saw you touching him. What's his name? I don't know what you're talking about. Where did he take you? London, Paris, Rome. Where did your new boyfriend take you? Where did he take you? I didn't go anywhere. Damn it! Stop lying to me! I'm sorry too. What are you sorry about? I'm sorry that it's come to this. This? This was never part of the plan. What are you going to do? What do you mean, what am I going to do? I mean, if, if I don't say what you want me to, to say, if you don't hear what, what you want to hear, are you going to hurt me? Are you going to kill me? I'm not going to kill you. I love you, Angela. I just want us to be together, like we used to be. Husband and wife, just like we used to be. We still are husband and wife. You know that, don't you? All this time, I've been angry with you. And I've missed you. Angela, it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been who you've been with, I think, I think I can get past that. I think we can work this out if you'll just be truthful with me, if you'll just tell me where you've been. What happens after that? Well, then we just go home. And go home like nothing's happened. Well, we can't pretend that nothing's happened. A lot of things have gone on. But we can work this out. I don't, this is how we get there. Richard, look at me. I'm tied up. I'm your hostage. I'm your wife. And I'm your hostage. You're not. There's no police outside. I, I, I'm not demanding a ransom for your life. Please, just untie me. Richard, untie me. We can... We can go out here, we can talk about it. We can... Just please untie me. I can't. Not yet. I will, I promise. But not yet. So, I'll be a prisoner until you decide to let me go. Look, just go with me on this one. Please, trust me. I don't want to be here, but at least let's just leave this place. We can go and talk somewhere else, please. This is a safe place. We can talk here without any distractions. Please. Just go with me on this one. I'm sorry for kicking it over. Just sit back for a minute, relax, and then we'll have a nice chat.
Can I grab coffee, please? Yep, lovely. Three pounds, please. Sorry, we don't take any card payments under five pounds. Oh, I've got no cash on me. Um, I guess I'm going to have some cake then, aren't I? What you got? We've got lemon cake, some muffins, toffee and apple pie. I really shouldn't. Oh, God. I'll get that for you. No, actually, it's OK. I'm just going to buy some cake. It's no problem. I've got change. No, no, it's OK. Yeah, four pounds exactly. Thanks. You know, I can't really see the problem with small amounts on card payments. It's all money at the end of the day. Are you okay? I just went for a job interview. What kind of job interview did you go for? Just sales. I'm in sales. Do you mind me asking which company you had the interview with? Um, Cartwright Homes. I used to work for Cartwright Homes. Ah, it's a coincidence. 2002, 2003. Did you happen to meet a guy called Martin Farrell? Ah, uh, yeah, actually. He interviewed me. And did he happen to mention at any point that he owns his own boat? Yeah, several times. Martin Farrell. Two words. Absolute asshole. As a woman, you have to be twice as sharp as the man. Basically, you have to be a shark. It's not a shark, that's not my technique. No, but in sales, a woman has to do twice the amount of work as the man just to gain the same level of as respect. It's sexist, but that's just sales. So you're saying to get anywhere, I've got to be like a hard-faced bitch. That's your words, but yes, it's obvious. I mean, you, your sales colleagues, they won't like you for it, but your, sales, your managers and your area managers, they'll love you. So you're saying that I basically have to sell my soul? You don't need to sell your soul. I've seen people that have been completely sold out to the job, and it's sad to see. But I can tell that by just from spending a few minutes talking to you that you're the type of salesperson that most customers would love to meet. Such a charmer. So which company do you work for? Well, I used to work for KRC Media. Well, I decided to take a year out. Travel abroad, lie on the beach and spend some money. Nice. Nice work if you can get it. So, take your family with you? No, I don't have much family around these parts. Just a brother. By the way, my name's Richard. My name's Angela. And you know, probably the best thing that's happened to you today is not getting that job at Cartwright Homes. Time will tell, we'll see. Listen, the first week at Cartwright Homes, it was okay during training, but then after that I didn't really like it. Um, do you fancy um, going for a drink at some time? Um, not here, a nice bar or something? Um, the bar's not really my thing. Okay. So that's fine, no problem. A nice restaurant though and dinner might be nice. Ah, no. That's what I'd like. Here's my card, my number's on there. Give me a call and we'll sort something out. Nice talking to you, Angela. Yeah, and you. frightened. I didn't know where our relationship was headed. You were drinking a lot. I was scared. I was never violent towards you. I know, I know. Stop speaking to me. You became reclusive. I didn't know if and when you were going to fast the handle with me. There was one night you were really drunk. You fell asleep on the sofa. So I packed a bag and I just left. Where did you go? 
went to a hotel at first, and then I moved to Scotland to stay with an aunt. Which aunt? Gloria. You can call her if you don't believe me. So you weren't here all along? No. I'm sorry I lied. Richard, you were drinking so much. And look at you, you're still drinking now. You were angry. Can't you see I was scared? If you were angry, who else are you going to take it out on apart from me? I'd never harm you, you must know that. We've been together for over three years. I've never once acted violently towards you. Richard, look at me, can't you see that I'm scared now? I'm tied up, whatever you call this. It's not right. It's not perfect. I need to go to the toilet. Please. Don't just untie me. I'm not going to try anything. I promise. Okay. I'll take it. No. Just untie me. Let me go on my own. I'm not going to try anything. I promise. through here. It's got no windows, so don't try anything, okay? I Hello, Stephen. It's me, Richard. I've found Angela. She's here with me now. I'm not sure what I should be doing. Stephen, I know it's been months since we've spoke, but I need your help. I'm stuck. I don't know how to fix this. Please phone me, please. Richard! So why did you come back? It's 
So why did you come back? My sister was worried about me. So you didn't come back to see me? Did Caroline call you about me? No. Do you speak to anyone in my family? Your family don't like me. They didn't say anything about me. I didn't speak to any of them. So, just so I've got this clear, you were that worried about me that you thought I was dead, yet you didn't even get in touch with my family. You were really worried about me, weren't you? Of course I was. I was more embarrassed than anything that you'd left me. What's so funny? This? This is? What's going on here, Richard? Doesn't sound like you were so desperate to find me. So what do we do now? Just sit here until... Ah. I brought something. Playing cards. Do you know why I'm showing you them? Because, because we used to like playing cards. You used to like playing cards more than watching TV. So I thought we'd do it again. We can play 21. You remember how to play 21, don't you? You want to play cards? Yeah. How can I play cards when my hands are tied? Hands in front of you and together. Nice. Just do it. My hands are tied. Can't you untie my feet at least? Just pick your cards up. You want to twist or stick? I'll stick. I'll twist. And I'll twist again. I'll stick with what I have. What do you have? <laughs> well done, I'm bust. Where are we? Langham Community Centre. I work here. Why do you work here? Because I do. What do you do? I'm the caretaker. What you're looking at is the prime piece of land. And judging by the amount of space available, we're not going to be able to sell it to you for that price. Right, so what price are we talking about? We'd be looking at something closer to a million. A million? That's a joke. I think we all know it's only worth most 200 grand. Yeah, we both know that. But when you build on that land and put apartments, bars, benches, you'll make that money back tenfold over. OK. Why do I feel like you're taking the mick? Look, you're both young guys. But this is business. Andrew, I know this, this land meant a lot to your father. And he was a good friend of mine. But he sold it. And now it belongs to us. We're prepared to sell. But you do need to understand exactly what this land is worth. Look, I know it sounds a lot, but that's nothing compared to what it's going to be worth in ten, five years even. We're going to need to go away and talk about this. Of course, but I wouldn't think about it for too long. We've had interest from other companies. This is a beautiful plot. We just thought we'd listen to what you had to say first. Okay, well, we'll be in touch. Okay. So, how was Preston, mate? <laughs> Preston. Preston, the same as it always is. Cold, wet and grey. <laughs> and that's just the customers. <laughs> Listen, I hate Preston. Why do you think I sent you? I don't think I don't know that. <laughs> How's Laura, anyway? She's still learning Spanish. Oh, is she? I'll tell you something. She spends half her time talking more Spanish than she does English in the house. I'll tell you something. And I bet you something, they're teaching her that many swear words. Because I walk home... I'll be in trouble, 
I'll come through the door and she'll start talking in Spanish. That's when I know I'm really in trouble. Yeah, it's probably a good job you don't know what she's saying then. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is, mate. Those kids. Yep. They're going to pay whatever we tell them to pay. And you know that, don't you? You bet tell them, mate. Well, why do we get the impression that there's something not right? <laughs> I don't like to tell you this, but I've got some bad news. I'm going to have to let you go. <laughs> Sorry? I'm afraid the head office have been on the phone. I've got to let you go, mate. Let me go, as in firing me. <laughs> We're not firing you. We just need to terminate the contract. Is this some kind of joke? I wish it was, mate. I really wish it was. Why? What have I done wrong? You haven't done anything wrong. It's just a case we have to make some budget cuts. You know how it is. Last one in. First one out. Budget cuts? <laughs> Budget. We're about to take a million off them kids and you're talking about budget cuts. David, how much money have I brought into this company since I've been I'm here? I'm not denying what you've done, Richard. I really am not denying. You've been a fantastic help. But you know what it's like. We've got fantastic, great salesmen and women in this company. You've got an exceptional track record. But when head office call, what can I do? And, uh... And when did head office tell you this? It was earlier this afternoon. So you knew all along? And you just sat there? Why, I, I made more money for the company. Look, if it goes through a commission, it'll be reflected in your salary. But like I said, it's nothing personal. This decision was made by nobody on this management team. It was made by head office. There's stuff going on down south that even I don't know about. So when the head office want me to leave? Your contract's terminated immediately. Immediately? As in, no? Yeah. Just, just like that? I make one more fantastic deal for Lockbells. I'm not expected to leave and say goodbye to my job without a grievance? Look, I understand the awkwardness of this situation. Miss! This is my job. This is my livelihood. My mortgage, my car. I don't believe this. Budget cuts. Budget cuts, David, that's bullshit and you know it is. I can't believe for one minute that a company like this, a multi-million pound company like this, can make budget cuts by sacking me. You're not the only one. You are not the only one. Right. So what if I was to take them to a tribunal? What if I was to take them to a public industrial tribunal? I really wouldn't do it. A, a company of this size taking it to a tribunal? You must be joking. And why not? Because it's just not done. You could go to a tribunal, yes, and have you could win. Go away with loads of money, yeah? But what would happen then? You'd be blacklisted. Nobody would employ you. But on the same way, you could go to a tribunal, lose, cost a fortune, and nobody would employ you. Now that sounds like something head office would say. Oh, say hi to Laura for me. Me the reason for this. It's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. 
speak to her, I'll get nervous and I'll start mumbling. She's going to think I'm right annoying. I hate to tell you this, but you are annoying. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I need to ask her out. If I don't, I might die. Just a minute. You dying, that might not be such a bad idea. <laughs> Obviously, you must pay your share of the rent. I'd have to get a new job, but I'd need some new people. This could be quite exciting for me. Put it like this. If I don't get with her, I'm stuck with you for everything. Unless it's your girlfriend. Okay, so here's what we'll do, Rose Rose. We'll role play, okay? I'm gonna be her. So you show me what you do. If I show what I do to her or you, our relationship will be a journey down the road. Come on, show me how you'd ask her out. Hey Kelly, how are you? Hey Dave, I'm fine. How are you? She doesn't sound like that. I've got to beat her. Hey Dave, I'm fine. How are you? I'm the caretaker here. I couldn't get anything else in sales. This was the only job I could find. 50,000 a year I used to earn. Now I get six pound an hour. A bloody caretaker. I work all my life to become a caretaker. We're in a community centre. Yeah. So, how much longer are we going to be here? For as long as it takes. Well, if this is a community centre, surely someone from the community is going to turn up and find us. So what are you going to do then? Don't worry about it. You haven't thought this through at all, have you? I'm not good enough for you anymore, am I? You think you're so much better than me. I lose my job and you're so much better than me all of a sudden.
busy day? Where have you been? Been at work. Not all this time you haven't. Where have you been? I've been out with a friend. Who? I'm drunk again, aren't you? Who are you with? I was having a coffee with a friend and it, it doesn't matter who. You were with another man, weren't you? Yeah. I know. Because I saw you. In the cafe. You were spying on me? I wasn't spying on you. I was walking down the streets and I saw you in there. And you look more than friendly with each other. It's just a friend. If you were so suspicious, why didn't you just come in and say hello? You've been caught in a lie. You've been caught, and you know it. I don't think you should drink anymore, Richard. Don't tell me what to do. You of all people are not going to tell me what to do. You know, the sooner you get out of here and get yourself a job, then the sooner we can talk like mature adults. You know, I didn't realise you were that shallow. I should have known you'd do something like this. What do you mean? I mean, well, I don't have any money at the minute, do I? I'm not the big shot with all the cash, am I? Angela, I'm not stupid. You don't work as hard as I have and end up with no money in the bank. Richard, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're trying to get at, but I'm tired. I've been at work all day. I can't deal with this now. What do you mean you don't know what I'm saying? It's obvious, Angela. You're having an affair. Yeah, that's right. I'm having an affair with a guy from the cafe. Yeah, the guy in the cafe. You know what? Yeah, I am having an affair. I'm having an affair with the guy from the cafe, with both the managers from work, and with the milkman. And it's all because you lost your job. No shit, Sherlock. Don't treat me like a fool, Angela. I'm absolutely sick of this, and you're accusing me of stuff. But you don't understand, do you? Well, I saw you in there. Every fucking night, you're always late. You're always late. No, no, no. How many times did I have to eat? That last night, I must have said some really horrible things. I just want you to know, I really am sorry. Do you even remember what you did to me that night, Richard? I spent all day at work, I come home and you've been drinking all day, absolutely pissed out of your head, and then you expect me to sleep in the same bed as you. What's happened to What's you? What's happened to me? What's happened to you? When did you start having a first? When did that become all right? Oh, Richard, have you heard yourself? This is ridiculous. Ridiculous! It's not even a real argument. It's just stupid. Don't call me stupid. Yeah, I'm not calling you stupid. This is stupid. This is stupid. Not you. I bought this house. I paid the mortgage. I've looked after you for the best part of three years. Is this how you repay me? Hey, is this how you repay me? Oh, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this right now. Don't walk away from me. Angela? 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 Oh my God. So you remember pushing me down the stairs then? Angela? I'm so sorry. Why am I only just remembering this? How's your head? Fine. Fine. I'm still playing cards then. Where did you put them? What do you think's happening here, Richard? Yeah. 
дела? Анджела! Murdered me, Richard. He pushed me down the stairs and killed me. No. Yes, Richard. He didn't even call for help. Angela. So sorry. Angela? Do you remember what you did? 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 Where are you, Angela? Do you remember what you did? Angela! Do you remember what you did? 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 Do you remember what you did?
Hello, how are you feeling? Now you've been asleep for a long time. It's good to see you awake. We still don't know your name. When you were found, you didn't have any identification. What's your name? My name? Do you remember where we found you? No. Can you tell me your name? I don't remember. Okay, well don't worry about it. The main thing is that you're awake. Now what I want you to do is just rest and we'll talk again later, okay? Good. Hi, I'm Detective Nolan. How are you feeling? Okay. So the um, the doctors, they say that you, you, you don't remember who you are. You still don't remember anything? The doctors also said that you fractured a few ribs, so you need to take it easy. How did I get here? You were brought here by, by two passers-by. They, they found you uh, near Hollybush Woods. Does that ring any bells? Do you remember anything about it at all? I was found near the woods. Yeah, I'm afraid it appears that way. What was I doing at the woods? What was I doing at the woods? We don't know. But don't worry, we will find out. I'll give you some time. Doctor, this is Angela. Angela Robinson. I'm going to take her home with me. I know you don't remember anything, but I'm here to help. I can tell by the way you're looking at me. You recognise me. You recognise my face, don't you? You can trust me. I love you to bits. Caroline, I remember everything. I lied at the hospital. I had amnesia. I remember everything that happened to me. me down the stairs. I thought I was dead. But instead of trying to save me, they just took me to the woods, wrapped me in a blanket, and left me in the woods. Richard did this. He didn't want to mention his name. Angela. Oh my god, he tried to kill you. He was drunk. And when he thought that he killed me, how a man did I marry? Angela, we need to go to the police. No, no police. Angela, he left you for dead. He still thinks that I am dead. I'm trying to keep it that way. Why? Because I, I don't want to see him again. I don't want him to see me again. He doesn't deserve me. I want him to, I want him to feel pain and anger and, and sadness. Listen, the detective that came to see you in the hospital is going to come back again really soon. And he's going to keep on asking questions. 
and eventually he's going to find out that you're married and then he's going to contact your husband he's going to contact him Carolyn, the world's being turned upside down the man who I loved, who I thought loved me I thought he'd die for me left me for dead abandoned me in the woods so much to process right now Can we just cross that bridge when we come to it? Of course we can. Of course we can. So what did your friends think about me then? What do you mean? After the dinner party last night, did they say anything? No. Come on, they must have ripped me apart. What did they say? Are you worried about what they think of you? Oh, I'm not bothered, I'm just a bit of curious. You are, you're bothered, aren't you? <laughs> no, you're worried they, about it. Did they like me or not? They like you. So they like me. I knew they would. Mm, confident. Well... Just take a good look at me. Tall, dark, handsome. Big headed. When I walk down the street, all the girls look at me and say, Wow, I wonder if he's single. <laughs> oh, I'll join the queue one. then. No, there's no queue, but there's a bit of a waiting list. And how do I join? Just go on the website. It's um, richardgirls.com. Okay, well, I'll sign up when I get home then. <laughs> Angela. I'll look after you now. Maybe I don't need looking after. Maybe you do, but you just don't realise you do. I've got an answer for everything. It's not everything, but there are some things that I'm certain about. Hey, you know that guy in the accounts I told you about? Oh, yeah? He asked me out. Oh, right, and what did you say? I told him I was spoken for. <laughs> I'm not worried. I've got nothing to worry about. Why is that then? Because you're so completely irresistible to all women? No. I've got a sneaky feeling that me and you, we're going to end up together. I'm off to work. I think it's going to be a late one. What are you doing, think you're dying? I'm off again. Okay, I'll see you tonight.
Scared. Don't be so scared, Angela. You have to be so confident. Look at your nail. I'll tell you why you're so scared. Look at yourself now. Does this look attractive to you? Look, does this look attractive? What are you afraid of? I'll tell you what she's afraid of. She's afraid of the big bad wolf. She's afraid of the big scary monster. She's afraid that he's coming to get her. Isn't that right? I'm not. We all know what you've been through. But don't you think it's time to move on? She can't move on. She's not ready to move on doesn't have it in her. What do you mean I don't have it in me? We have spent six months, six months, living in a prison that you created for yourself. You're both jailkeeper and prisoner. Why are you doing this to yourself? I'm not in prison. Are you scared of him? Are you scared that he's going to find you? No. No, I'm not scared of him. I'm scared that I'm going to be stuck here forever. But this is my lot in life. And why does that scare you? No! The question should be, why do you need to stay stuck here forever? Because he's out there. And the thought of that makes me feel physically sick. What do you mean? What kind of man would do what he did? The kind of man that should be punished. Prison is too kind an option for him. This is why you spend most of your time in here. Because you're fearful of him. I think so. No, look, I don't know. What would you do if you saw him again? I don't know. You know, there is a way to deal with a monster like him. Do you know what that is, Angela? You take a knife and you drive it through his heart. I'd love to. You'd love to. Well, why don't you? Because she's not a murderer. But how is she supposed to carry on living when he's a constant threat in her world? He's not a threat. He thinks you're dead. So he's a murderer. And what now? He's gone back to living his life like normal? Like it never happened? An eye for an eye, Angela. He's not a murderer. He pushed you down the stairs. And when he thought you were dead, he didn't call the police. He wrapped you in a blanket and dumped you in the woods like a dead animal. Any humanity that that man had died when he left you for dead. He loved me. So did I. But this is the only way you're going to be able to carry on with any hope for the future. I'm inclined to agree. While he's out there, you're going to remain in here. That's not right, is it? It's not right, is it?
Richard. Head. Sit down. I wondered if I'd ever see you again, and I wondered if when I saw you, if I'd still feel anything, if I'd still feel love, if I'd miss you. And then I also wondered if I'd be able to look at you for more than two seconds without wanting to kill you. I have no feelings of love for you whatsoever. Are you going to kill me? What do you think I should do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know what's real anymore. You know, I spend half the day... Stop talking. I've come here because there's things that I need to say. So you just need to listen. There's only one thing that I want to hear from you. You're just going to listen to me first. About three weeks after we were married, I had this dream. Yeah. Like, it really disturbed me. It's in this field. Um, we were really happy, just you and me. And the sun was shining. Um, anyway, you went to go get us something, I don't know, it was an ice cream or something, but there was an ice cream van and then we went. And it was still okay. I felt weird. And then it kind of got dark and you didn't come back, but I kept waiting and waiting. You didn't come back. And then I was scared. I was really scared. So then I was in this empty field all by myself. And then I saw a figure in the distance. And I was afraid. And he came closer, but I couldn't see, I couldn't see their face. I was so scared. And I woke up. I didn't wake you. But I spoke to you the next day, remember? Remember when you promised me that you would never abandon me, you'd never leave me alone, you'd always be there to take care of me. Do you remember? So how do you think I felt when I woke up alone in the woods? The last thing that I can remember is being pushed down down the stairs by you. The, the thing that has really gutted me for the past six months, right? So you push me down the stairs you were drunk, which is bad, but 
maybe could have got over that somehow. But when you thought that you'd killed me, you didn't do anything about it. You didn't get help. No 999. Now you're just going to dump me in the woods like a dead dog. I can't forgive that. So, the only thing that I want to hear from you is, is, is how? Why? How? How could you do that? How could you leave your wife in the woods? I don't think I could ever say the right thing. All I can say is, if you're going to use that knife to kill me, it's probably the right thing to do. The thing is, I've been dead for months. I'm already dead in here. Ever since I did that, what I did to you. I just wanted to know. I was drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. I, I, I was scared. I'm so sorry. You deserve better than me. No, no. I don't deserve to live. I won't fight you. Go ahead. You really feel bad for what you did. <gasps> yeah. I feel bad. I feel terrible. Well, goodbye, Richard. has been in talks with the Russian president in order to re-establish financial trading. They promised to have a decision for the public by 2 p.m. In local news, a man has been found dead in his home in the West Stafford area of the city. He was discovered by a neighbour and is believed to have been stabbed to death. Police are looking for witnesses. The demolition of the former National and Provincial site begins today at 12 p.m. with thousands of people expected to gather in the area. This marks the end of a three-year wait for the flood.
Vantage PLC has been hit by the recession. Further job cuts are expected over the next 12 months, but Vantage PLC have stated that they will try and hold on to as many employees as possible. In local news, a man has been found stabbed to death in his home this morning in the West Stafford area. He has been identified as 43-year-old Mr.